Oh yes, country roads take me home. We're back in Oklahoma. Beautiful, sunny, fantastic heartland of America, Oklahoma. Lately I've spent so much time in California and New York and Orlando, just coast to coast to coast to coast. I have been really missing the heartland, the middle of the country, and it doesn't get much more middle than Oklahoma. And because I'm a big fan of Oklahoma and a huge fan of the movie Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, whenever I get to this state, I have a tradition. Oklahoma! He'll enjoy Oklahoma's wide open spaces. He loves to run and run. Woo! And now that that's out of the way, let's head into town. Now, Oklahoma is a Route 66 state. And spoiler alert, that is where I am eventually headed. But since I flew into Dallas, first I have to make my way up I-35. With some epic stops along the way, and then we're gonna get to see something that very few people have ever seen. Something epic. But first, speaking of epic, take a look at this. Won't you look at the size of that cow? Oh, boy. oh yeah, look at him, a 20 foot tall cowboy. It's one of the roadside classics. Commonly known as Muffler Men. Originally designed as lumberjacks for a restaurant on Route 66 in the 1960s. These giants have been adapted in all kinds of ways and this one is a cowboy. Check it out, he's surrounded on all sides by horses and buffalo. And that's because this giant cowboy is advertising a western wear store. Oh yeah, you know you're on a road trip when you're stopping to see muffler men and you know you're in Oklahoma when those muffler men are cowboys. Doesn't hurt when they add in some other animals. Because after all, what would a giant cowboy be without some giant cows? And of course, as long as we're at it, some giant pigs as well, huh? Yes, I love this country. Speaking of loving this country, just down the highway is our next stop, Main Street, USA. The gorgeous little Oklahoma town of Paul's Valley. Complete with not just one, but two epic old timey train stations. And what would the depot be without the old steam locomotive to go along with it? Wow. Wow. Look at the size of this thing. Ain't she a beauty? I have a much greater appreciation for steam locomotives ever since I got to drive that little narrow gauge one at Knott's Berry Farm, the one from the 1800s. Well, this one's a lot newer than that one and a lot bigger. Man, wish we could patch this thing up and take it for a spin, huh? That engine sure is impressive. And I gotta say, between you and me, it's got an awfully nice caboose. Now, one thing that impresses me about Oklahoma every time I come here is the number of absolutely stunning little 19th century towns. And Paul's Valley is a beautiful example. Of all the things I get to do, exploring places like this is my favorite. I mean, just look at this epic Art Deco gas station. How cool is this? This is a textbook example of they don't make them like they used to. And the crazy part is that's not the only cool old gas station. There's a converted Conoco station as well. And another old mystery gas station at the end of town. Both converted and recycled into other businesses, which is what it's all about. And speaking of repurposing historic buildings and revitalizing Main Street USA, it's time to admit that I didn't just come down here to look at Bill's upholstery. The real reason we're in Paul's Valley is this. The toy Toy and Action Figure Museum! Three of my all-time favorite things combined. Historic Main Street USA towns, roadside attractions, and action figures! And best of all, it's camera friendly! Now you might be thinking, how impressive can a small town action figure museum actually be? Well, I have the answer for you. Oh, this place is awesome! All the impressive. Holy cow. Holy moly. Holy plastic plaything, Batman. This place is mind blowing. Oh, sorry, Gandalf. I forgot this is a museum. Dude, everywhere you look in here, you get an eyeful of more toys than I ever thought was possible. And this place doesn't waste any time. Right from the second you walk in, bam. They hit you in the face with. This, the adult collector's bedroom diorama. What you look at the size of that toy collection? This is literally unbeatable. 
unbelievable. There are so many action figures here. I can't even see individual things. It's just all a blur of wonder. This is like every kid who plays with action figures. Wildest fantasy bedroom come to life. Seriously, look at all this stuff. I can't even process what I'm seeing. This is both the most amazing thing I've ever seen and also kind of like a family reunion. Because I see so many of my old friends in here. So many familiar faces. The Ghostbusters, Pee-wee's Playhouse, Star Wars figures, Beetlejuice, 90s X-Men toys, the Ewok Village. There's even rock and roll action figures. There's Kiss, Freddie Mercury, Kurt Cobain. I see Batman, Superman, Zorro, Bucky O'Hare, Doc Brown, Street Sharks, Iron Man, My Little Pony, Ooh, the Crash Dummies. I see so many toys that I used to have and so many that I always wanted. Like, look at that. It's the next generation bridge playset. And way, way in the back, very hard to spot, is Darkwing Duck's jet. I looked and I looked in every toy store, always sold out, never had one. But dude, just look at this wall. It's literally countless. I just asked the owner, do you know how many pieces are in this? And he's like, nope, never counted. Imagine having a collection like this. This. I bet if you look closely, you're probably spying a lot of your favorite action figures that I'm not even noticing up on these walls. There's so much stuff here. I've literally been standing here for 20 minutes and I haven't seen it all. This right here by itself is the single most impressive action figure collection I have ever seen. And even if it was just this, it would be an impressive action figure museum. But no, there's more. And more and more. Whoa, check out all of these displays. Look at all of these Transformers. Or if Transformers aren't your thing, how about some superheroes? Oh, these are just a few Marvel superheroes. We're going to see a lot more of them. How about this? Vintage Dick Tracy action figures. Oh, man, I remember these guys. They had a very particular weird shape. They all look kind of saddle sore, you know? I always thought it was weird the way their legs were spread apart like that. Every wall in this whole huge building is covered with displays like that. I had no idea what kind of toys were going to be in So I was very pleased to find out there's a whole bunch of my favorites, including these guys. Look, it's the Ninja Turtles. Oh my god. Gosh, the original Playmates Ninja Turtles toys. I had that, and that, and that. Oh, I loved the party wagon, and I really loved having the Technodrome back there. Part vehicle, part playset. It worked with any action figure. It was just the ultimate evil villain lair, you know? I never did have giant Krang, but I did have little Krang. See him back there? Aw, oh, little Krang. Oh, man, I don't have a lot of time today, or I would just spend 20 minutes looking at each thing in each case. But if we're going to have to make it to our final destination. We're going to have to try to keep it moving. <laughs> Look at that. Even the queen approves of that. Whoa, check this out, 80s toy fans. Look at this. It's mask action figures. Nobody ever talks about mask for some reason, but these toys were everywhere. And the cool thing was they were so small. They were super easy to take with you to grandma's house. I only ever had a few mask figures. I never really knew much about the show or the storyline. But these were a heck of a lot of fun. I should mention really quickly that this entire action figure museum grew out of the personal collection of one guy. Local artist, musician, and entrepreneur Kevin Stark. And apparently all of this doesn't even comprise his entire collection. There's enough that they have rotating displays of different characters like the Hulk here and they'll change them out every once in a while with other characters and other features. Yeah. There's displays that cover toy history like this Barbie display. Displays that cover certain sculptors. A display on sculpting clay. They've got everything from static Japanese figures to 90s Spider-Man animated series toys meant to be played with all the way to the very high end, very pricey, highly detailed adult collectibles. Look at the size of that Balrog. You Shall not pass. I do what I want. Oh, dude, look at this. Check out the 
dueling superhero action figure displays. They've got all these Marvel action figures in one case and all the DC Comics figures in another. And it kind of looks like they're ready to face off with each other. Now, I know Marvel is super popular right now thanks to all of those movies. But who do you guys think would win in a fight, huh? The DC Universe versus the Marvel Universe. All of these heroes and villains versus all of these heroes and villains. I don't know. DC? Marvel? DC? Now Marvel is definitely winning in pop culture and dominating in the movies these days. But when I was growing up, I considered myself more of a DC person, but all because of one character. One ultimate hero that this place did not forget. Batman. And not just any Batman. Every Batman. Comic book Batman. Batmania Adam West Batman. And my personal favorite, Michael Keaton Batman. Oh, the best. I am so legitimately jealous of every sick 89 Batman collectible item in this place. And there are a lot. Yeah, Michael Keaton, Christian Bale, Val Kilmer, even Lego Batman is here. Dude, look at the size of this Batman collection. Oh man, I had many of these items as a kid, like those Happy Meal toys over there. Or the Kenner Dark Knight collection Batmobile, which I'm trying to get a hold of another one. But they are pricey now. They've got the Bat Missile Batmobile, the Toy Biz Batmobile, even a sick Power Wheel style ride on Batmobile. Oh my gosh. These were my first favorite toys, the 89 Batman toys, like those right there, the Toy Biz ones, right in the center of your screen. Then that line was bought up by Kenner, so Kenner started putting out the Dark Knight collection, which is this Batman stuff right in here. Oh, let me tell you, those were some great Christmases. You cannot have too many carded 80s and 90s Batman action figures. Someday, Jennifer, someday. You guys, this is amazing. There's a whole bat cave in here with every bat item you can possibly imagine. Color forms, lunch boxes, painting kits, magazines, video games, and best of all, the coup de gras. It may be the Val Kilmer version, but still, it's a ride on Batmobile. I'm driving the Batmobile. Shh, don't tell Batman. Dude, who has that just hanging around. I want to stay in this room forever, but there's more museum to see. Oh, just my next birthday. Send me this. This is what I want. All right, now no action figure museum would be complete without a Star Wars section. Oh, and don't you worry. There are plenty of Star Wars figures, including this carded Empire Strikes Back figure that says free revenge of the Jedi figure. Rare. There's old advertisements, life-size cardboard cutouts, figures and vehicles, both vintage and new, everywhere. And perhaps best of all, at the entrance, two custom-made life-size stormtroopers, hand-built by my friend Paul Snyder. And it's to his house we're going next, because his house is known by me as the Oklahoma House of Wonder. But first, real quickly, there are space toys here that we didn't get to talk about. There are a load of Barbie, Simpsons toys, Pez, Mego heroes, and even superhero underwear. Ooh, smells fast. A veritable forest of G.I. Joes. You remember them, the real American heroes. There's also all kinds of other memorabilia. And a whole hands-on play area that we didn't even talk about. Where the kids can get hands-on with some toys. Even a sick pig. Right on, sick. Way, way too much to see all in one day. Plus, they're constantly changing everything, so I definitely have more than enough of an excuse to come back sometime. If you're ever driving between Dallas and Oklahoma City, get off the interstate. Make your way down here to Paul's Valley and check out this epic action figure museum. I promise you it is worth the $7. Ooh, and if you thought that was good, now it's time for the main attraction, Paul Snyder's Oklahoma 
Wonder House. Now to get to the Wonder House, we actually have to head back up the freeway towards Oklahoma City. It's actually very close to Route 66. It could be considered a Route 66 attraction. Only of course it's not open to the public. Only private tours unfortunately. But don't worry, I'll explain how you get one of those in just a little bit. But first, prepare your mind. The place we are about to go is just a regular looking house like one of these. But the inside will blow your mind. Prepare to enter Paul Snyder's House of Wonders. wonder around every corner right from the moment you walk in there's something amazing everywhere you look every time I turn a corner I see a new movie prop or painting or custom decoration but of course most impressively so many epic life-sized figurines and I thought the action figures were impressive what you Look at the size of that Schwarzenegger! This entire house is filled with custom artwork, custom decorations, and custom-made life-size figurines, for the most part, all built by Paul Snyder himself. Whoa! I thought you were a dummy there for a second. But no dummy could have ever created something like this. Look at it's Robin Williams. Arwen Evenstar. Kylo Ren. <laughs> Even Angelina Jolie. Handmade, custom sculpted by Paul himself. How did you start doing this? Well, there are no wax museums in Oklahoma, so I thought I'd make my own. Of course, nobody starts out making full-fledged figurines. And Paul is no exception. It turns out he's an exceptionally good painter. These are some of my acrylic paintings on canvas. I like to paint people. Paint people? You like to make people, too. I guess you could say you're just a people person. Paul has art in galleries and private collections all over the world. And like any true artist, he kept experimenting and started doing this stuff just for fun. And then, of course, you know, people get wind. Hey, can you make me this? Can you make me that? And now there are literally dozens of these things scattered all over. Over a hundred figures in all, only in the last six years or so. Talk about productivity. Honest Abe would be proud. He's also done a lot of work on independent films. And cut quite a few tunes in the old home studio as well. Soundtracks, albums. A multi-talented, multi media artist, but obviously the most impressive thing, the thing that really hits you in the face are the life-size figures. Dude, look at the size of these things. Four predators here standing in the corner. Each of them with a different face, all custom made, custom outfitted. Dude, forget having the action figure. I want this. Apparently Paul wasn't satisfied with action figures. They needed to take things up a notch. Right from the moment you come in the front door, you are forced to admit seeing all these life-size figurines is simply magical. Can you feel the magic? Can you feel it? I can. If you have to have a room to eat dinner in, why not make it part of Hogwarts? I know I digest better with McGonagall watching me, don't you? Oh yeah, Harry Potter dining room. A predator in Tested music studio. Why stop there? Why not your own Hall of Presidents? Yes, my name is Abraham Lincoln, the great emancipator. You might have heard of me from the penny. <laughs> four score, well actually two years ago, I was created as a decoration for this hallway. And I've since gained a new hat. Quite becoming, Mr. President. And after you visit the Hall of Presidents, why not stop in the guest room? Now, see, here you will notice that Paul and his very lovely wife, Kaya, are big-time Disneyland fans. And they have very good taste in magnets. Now, of course, being such nice people, they said that I could stay with them and stay in the spare bedroom. But I politely declined. Because I just don't think I'm ready to slumber. While Eddie Murphy and Jim Carrey are watching me. No offense, guys. It's just a little 
Weird. Hey, wait a minute, Jimmy! Where's your hand? Oh, there it is. Oh, it is so nice to meet you, Mr. Carey. I gotta hand it to you. You're funny. Speaking of Paul's wife, Kaya. It isn't just Paul who has a flair for unusual decorations. Turns out she has a whole room of her own dedicated to dolls. Really? Really? Really realistic dolls. Wow. <laughs> Sure are a lot of them. <laughs> Especially like this one here with uh, no eyes. I love how having a doll collection is way more normal, way more usual than having a life-size figurine collection. But this is what creeps me out. <laughs> Something about their dead little faces. I'm noticing that there is somewhat of an anime theme going here. I have the feeling that Allie would approve. See, these are fine. I like this. It's just uh, some of the other ones make me a little nervous. 100%. Things whisper in this room at night. I'm getting out of here. Oh, yeah. This is a lot better. Hey there, Maleficent. Tommy. My guy. Who's my top gun? Who's my top gun? You are. Look at this. He's a fan. He's got a sick pin. That Maverick. He's a class act. That's right. Tom is cool, but I am stronger. Okay, Mr. Governor. Seriously, and look, I have more weapons. We... We know, it's okay. Come back. I'll be back. <laughs> I do a terrible Arnold. Check this out. Here we have a custom Jamie Foxx wearing a screen-worn costume from the movie Ray. Weird. It's like it leapt out of the screen. And here you have a screen-worn costume of Dwayne The Rock Johnson on a custom-made figure without a head. Paul. You gotta get around to making that head. Come on, The Rock needs you. Whoa, a screen-worn Kate Winslet costume. The head is coming, you know, TBD. Wow, Kate Winslet touched this. And now I touched it. Oh, I've absorbed her powers. I touched Kate Winslet's sweater. Oh, didn't see you there. Dude, I love this. They're big Disneyland fans. But since they're living here in Oklahoma and can't always go to the parks, they've brought the parks to their living room. And I love that the Disney Land Castle blends in with the custom painted sky above. Paul, you're like Michelangelo, only not Italian as much. And you don't have a shell. <laughs> That's right. Oh man, all right, let's keep exploring. Check out all the signed movie posters. Steven Spielberg there and three custom made gorilla heads molded off of real gorillas. All I can make is a mess. Paul's making gorilla heads. Yeah. So <laughs> oh, sick. Johnny? Depp? It is Johnny Depp, and check it out. He's wearing a screen-used costume from Secret Window. Johnny Depp wore this robe. Oh, wow. Dude, are those the actual sandals, too, that he wore? They are the actual sandals, and they even gave me his freaking socks. Those are Johnny Depp's socks? No. Oh, oh, oh. oh Johnny, 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 Johnny. Oh, whoa. Whoa! Ooh, gold bond in the shoes every day. Oh man, look at this Arwen Evenstar and of course Robin Williams. Now this one you didn't custom sculpt, right? So what's the deal with this one? This one's a life cast of Robin Williams' face taken by my friend Bill Forsh. So this was an actual casting from right. his face while he was so alive. Every pore, everything that's Whoa. And then I paint. So if you were thinking to yourselves, this one doesn't look as realistic. Ha! Gotcha. Wow, that's Robin Williams' face. Don't talk. You don't need to say anything. We miss you. Oh, man, it's a little bit heartbreaking, especially when paired with the portrait that Paul did of Robin Williams when he died. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't mean to make you sad. I was trying to make you angry. Like angry Morgan Freeman. Look at this guy here. Why is he so angry? Paul, what's he so angry about? I mean, look, he won an Oscar. What's wrong? The movie was great. Everyone loved it. You won an Academy Award. It's going to be okay, Morgan. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Freeman. Is he still looking? 
Is he still looking at us? No. Note to self, Morgan Freeman does not like to be touched, and neither, I presume, does Kylo Ren. Oh, look at this guy. Look at the intensity in his eyes. That's the intensity he uses to channel the dark side of the Force, to cut down his enemies, and to play with his toys. Kylo doesn't mess around when he chooses an action figure. Or a patch. <laughs> nice choice. Someday you'll even earn the right to wear the hat, but not yet. Not yet. All right, Paul doesn't want me to show you guys Luke Skywalker because he doesn't have his final wig yet, and he's wearing Poe Dameron's costume. He's a little bit, the perfectionist is a little bit embarrassed over here. Don't worry, though. He's standing right next to Kylo Ren. He's probably going to get cut down any second. Look, he's already got his lightsaber activated. And Luke, you're just standing there. Defend yourself. Much disappointment I feel in you, Luke. Oh, my gosh, you guys. Look at this. What a treasure. It's Mini-Me. Oh, my gosh. That looks so real. Oh, and there's more floor characters. Look at this. What the heck is this? It's Leonardo DiCaprio. And somebody finally threw him a life preserver. Okay, I don't care who you are. That is art. Oh, that's funny. I approve. But one thing I can never approve of is Twilight. I don't care how much it sparkles. You stay on the floor, Edward. Bad vampire. Oh, man, that guy's worse than Chucky. Look at this guy. Look at that innocent... Loving face. He's one of the good guys. Kelly gets a knife. Man, it's crazy to see little Chucky down there next to big old Chewbacca. That is one heck of a Wookiee. Look at this. It's Indiana Jones himself. Indy! Asps. Very dangerous. You go first. Oh, this is great. This belongs in a museum! This room here is so freaking impressive. You would think this was the end. Oh, hey there, Katniss. I almost forgot about you. But no, it turns out there's so much more. Welcome to Starbucks. Because the only thing better than having your own wax museum in your house is having a cup of the book served up by everyone's favorite barista, cranky, grumpy, old man Luke Skywalker. Oh, you really did didn't want to train Ray, did you guys? No, you didn't. Were you mad that a lot of people didn't like The Last Jedi? You were? Because some people thought that you didn't like it. Did you like it? Do you like anything anymore? Luke? I'm sorry, Luke. No, he's still upset that they killed off his character. That's why he's making coffee now. Whoa. Vin Diesel's in the corner. And look! The baby! Listen, Paul, I understand why you put Vin over here, but nobody puts baby in a corner! Somebody get baby out of here! Oh my gosh! Steve Martin! Nathan R. Johnson! Freddie Benson! Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Oklahoma! That's the guy! Dude, and it looks so real! Hey, Steve. Please don't talk. Scary. Scary. Gary Good, almost as good as America's most trusted face. It's Tom Hanks. Look how handsome he is. And he's even got his bubblegum shrimp company hat on. Look at him. He doesn't have to worry about money anymore. That's good. One less thing. Mama says stupid is as stupid does. <laughs> I don't do a very good Forrest Gump impersonation. Johnny Depp? Wow. Look at that Jack Sparrow. I'm sorry, I know. Captain Jack Sparrow. Oh my gosh. The detail in this costume is amazing. And look at that face. I love these figures, by the way, because they're not actually made of wax. I think they're partially made out of resin, so they're actually touchable, or at least Paul's letting me touch them. Which means I can just gently caress. Okay, yeah, that's a little weird. Ooh, ooh, ooh man, this one is extra sweet. Ooh, you forgot your hat, Captain Jack. Here, take mine. Just kidding. <laughs> you gotta earn this. You never watch Random Land. I know you. I love that there are screen-used props from one of the Pirates movies. Right here, but I am ten times more impressed with this because, Paul, you made this. You made Johnny Depp. He should call you on Father's Day. Oh, man. If having your own Starbucks wasn't enough, this room isn't just a place to get coffee. It turns out that this room is the foyer. The entryway, if you will, to the Snyder Cinema. Whoa. <laughs> Dude, you guys. Would you take a look at this? Like Luke constructing his own lightsaber, Paul has constructed his 
own screening room. Dude, a custom built DIY movie theater in your house playing the classics, of course. This is amazing. And of course, Paul painted the ceiling himself. Oh man. This is awesome. Check out the view from the balcony. If those seats were a little smaller, I would feel like this was a real movie theater from this angle. This looks gargantuan. This is so impressive and it's all in a room that's basically the size of your average garage. But this is way better than just having another car hole. Well, Except for the resident hecklers. Hey, quiet down down yeah, there. You're not funny. Hey. Uh, now I know how Fozzie Bear felt. Dude, that is amazing. Statler and Waldorf up there. And of course, some epic replica props from some of Hollywood's greatest films. This is incredible. And wait a minute. What is this? The head of Matthew McConaughey? Normally, I would make a joke right about now, but this is... This is too many for me. Oh my gosh, this is so freaking cool. And is that it for the House of Wonders? No, of course that's not it. There's still another even more epic room to go. Because we still haven't seen the garage. And knowing this guy over here, a regular garage is just not going to cut it. And what's a fella to do when he already has his own Starbucks and movie theater? I'll tell you what he does. He builds his own blockbuster. Holy moly. Would you look at the size of this display. This is awesome. Check out the film and check out the staff. Yes, that is Peter Cushing as Grand Moff Tarkin as Blockbuster employee, complete with Padme Amidala, no longer queen. Except of the movie scene. And what's this, Johnny Depp? Oh, yes, I would like a membership card. Thanks, Johnny. Oh, this is so cool. Check it out. You can rent Sister Act and then bring home Whoopi Goldberg to watch it with you. It's the perfect movie night. Oh, I didn't see you there, Captain. Whoa, wait a minute. I don't remember Blockbusters having an adults only second. What you got in there, Paul? I know this is a family show, but you got, I have to, oh, man, it's not what I was expecting, but it's everything I was hoping for. This is the coolest way to store your Christmas decorations and your Star Wars popcorn buckets I have ever seen. Look at the size of that wampa. And yes, of course, custom made. Actually, from what I understand, Paul had a ton of Star Wars stuff he built. Which he only recently just got rid of. Of course, right before I show up. It's okay, I forgive you, Paul. Just make more. Make more! Oh my gosh, you guys. The custom blockbuster isn't all. Check this out. Here's Joe Dirt sweeping up the garage. Look at that dirt, dirt. Ah, you heard me. Wow. Oh, cool glasses. And last but not least, the Snyder Movie Museum. Look at this. Now, from time to time, Paul purges the figures so he can make room to create new ones. And they just had a garage sale here recently where they were selling off some of his creations. So this is actually a light day here in the movie museum. But look at the impressive lineup we have here today. Whoa, oh, Brad! I loved you in that movie you were in with that guy, and there was a lady, and you went to the place and did the thing. You know the one I'm talking about. Sorry, I almost hit you right in the little weird beard there. Oh, that Brad. He's a talker and a looker, and oh my goodness, look at this. It's Rocky. Oh. The Italian Stallion, the champ. Oh, man. What's wrong? Looks like Rocky's sad. He must have lost a fight. Oh, to my favorite line in any Rocky movies where he's like, That's so inspirational. Look at that. It's the big guy himself. I don't know if I should be looking at him. I'm still not caught up on a lot of Marvel movies. Oh, man, I'm not supposed to know that this thing does the thing to those guys that people spoiled the, the last Avengers movie for me with. I really need to catch up before Endgame is spoiled for me, too. All right, last but not least are these guys. The Iron Man. And these are very important. Not only are they freaking awesome, and yes, custom made by Paul. But two of them have an amazing story. Check this out. Look at the 
battle damage on this guy. Well, it turns out, my friends, what you're looking at is not battle damage. It's tornado damage. Because this is actually Paul Snyder's second Wonder House. That's right. Paul had already done so much work to fill his old house up with crazy custom creations. That was the first year he was making these life-size figures. He filled up his house with like 30 of them. When on May 20th, 2013, Paul's original Wonder House went from looking like this to looking like this. Destroyed by a tornado. F5. F5. Five. I don't really know what that means, but it sounds bad. All of Paul's creations and possessions were destroyed. I feel like for most people, that would totally kill the mood. But you, sir, you did not give up. No, no, no. You can't let a little thing like a tornado stop you from creating, stop you from dreaming, stop you from building. So my quiet friend here, who's very camera shy, did not give up, but instead started from absolute scratch, literally the ground up. And Paul and K.S. Snyder built the second House of Wonders, the one we see before us today. If that is not an inspirational story, then I I do not know what is. Everything you own, everything you worked for is destroyed. And what do you do? You simply start over. You drag some Iron Man out of the rubble, piece them back together, build yourself a McGonagall, some predators, some beautiful companions. When life gets you down, you just gotta keep on living. And that's what makes this a wonder house. Or a House of Wonders. I still haven't decided. Paul doesn't have a name for it. But it definitely needs one. Actually, you can help us out. Vote down in the comments. Should it be the Oklahoma Wonder House or the Oklahoma House of Wonders? You decide. Now, like I said, this isn't really open to the public here. It's sort of a private tour type of deal. But you can check out Paul's artwork, his creations, the updates to the Wonder House, and maybe slide a DM in there. If you're in the area, I don't know. No promises. But you might just be able to snag that invite. Again, go follow Paul on Instagram. It should be flashing on your screen. Our operators are standing by to take your call. And let him know how much you enjoyed the Wonder House. Or House of Wonders, you know. All right, guys, it is time for me to wrap things up. It is time for me to head back towards Route 66. Back towards my destiny out on the road. I want to thank you, Paul, for uh, letting me wander around. Let me bring all these people into your house and snoop around. I know you're very excited, but I know you do not like talking on camera at all. So we're going to get out of your hair and let you go back to painting, you know, making albums, directing and producing films, creating life-size man, all the stuff you do. Because we have now done our duty. So, Junior, we're gonna go home and sleep well. Bye-bye! Johnny Depp? Johnny Depp? Johnny Depp? Johnny? <laughs> Johnny Depp? Johnny Depp? Johnny Depp? Johnny Depp? Johnny Depp? Johnny Depp? Oklahoma! He'll enjoy Oklahoma's wide open spaces. He loves to run and run. Batman tortilla chips. Oh man, they had Batman everything back then. Batman cereal. I still have some of the cereal boxes, but I don't have a bag of Batman tortilla chips. You know, I love that movie so much. And if you took that bag of chips out, I'd, I'd probably eat some. <laughs>
<laughs> I thought I was joking at first, but actually, knowing me, I probably actually would. Mmm, that delicious. I mean, they're not that stale. They were only made, what, 30 years ago? <laughs> I had bubblegum older than that. Literally. Ugh. I finally hit the Batmobile! Even Lego Batman is here! Hey, Lego that. Lego that. Lego! Lego. 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 Le Le <laughs> if it spoke to me, I would become greatly agitated. If this thing spoke right now, I would be unnerved. If it suddenly spoke to me, I would be upset. If this thing starts talking, I might pee. Just a little. Hey, Steve. Please don't talk. Scary. Sailing takes me away from the Titanic things. We're cool till I met a girl. And then Billy Zane framed me. I totally didn't do anything. It's just because I'm hanging out down with the Irish and people are prejudiced against the Irish. And now I'm in the ocean and I'm gone. I'll never let go.